It's kind of a funny story. I came into Middlebury originally thinking I wanted to do biology or um, perhaps environmental studies, but I got a very bad registration number. Professor Fitzsimmons had an open spot in his class, which was intro to archaeology. And so freshman fall, I ended up taking that, having no interest in it, and switching around my entire plans for my future to do something that I absolutely loved off of the experience of one class. The initial idea was that uh, we were going to take the Steely off-site. Um, because the Steely were threatened, uh, act actually for a number of reasons. Um, uh, there's, there is illegal sort of drug traffickers that are moving uh, eastwards across the border from Mexico into Guatemala now, uh, and the Steely themselves are threatened. Uh, and so the initial idea came about as a way to um, move the Steely off site and bring them to a more secure location. And when you bring Steely off of a, off of a site uh, to a more secure location like a museum, um, oftentimes it involves creating replicas of those stele to place back at the original site. The idea to bring a cast here uh, to Middlebury actually came out of that. So during the cast making process we sort of started thinking about um, would it be possible to bring a cast uh, back to Middlebury and uh, I talked it over with the uh, Minister of Culture and some other folks uh, in Guatemala and we figured out that yeah it would be a good idea. The ancient Maya were uh, a civilization existing from about 250 to about 900 or so AD and uh, the lowland classic Maya existed in the lowlands of what is today uh, sort of southern Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, uh, El Salvador, and Honduras. The site that I work at uh, in sort of, in today it's called Zapote Bobal. In, 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 in the ancient Maya language, it would have been known as Hish Wheats. And Maya Stila, um, it's, it's, it's actually, think of it as, as a large stone monolith with uh, the portrait of a king on it. Uh, and that portrait oftentimes is accompanied by hieroglyphics. Uh, and these glyphs provide us with all, ki all kinds of information about uh, the births, deaths, and lives of, uh, of Maya kings and kingdoms. When you see one, it's, especially if it's in great condition, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, the pictures that I saw in textbooks never did it justice. It was actually quite difficult to find the stela. We found one very easily because it was an open plaza in the pretty much center of the site. The other one was much harder to find, and we spent at least three or four days trying to dig it up. Professor Fitzsimmons had drawn a map of um, where these may be located, but maps are unreliable sometimes, and it, we were off by, it must have been four feet, and we were digging all around it. We did seek local help. Uh, they had done digs before for Professor Fitzsimmons and had worked for him before. You have to actually sort of, you know, work with people for a long period of time. And I've been, I've been working with people in, in the local village for years and years and years now. They definitely knew what they were doing. They knew as much as I did or even more because they had uh, actually done excavation for him. There's nothing like trying to compete against someone who has done the labor before because I was extremely slow <laughs> and I did not know as much as they did so it was great watching them but it was very hard to keep up with. Bringing a steely off site involves um, a number of different sort of skills. Um, one skill is the skill to be able to build uh, large scaffolds uh, over the monument and to be able to actually lift it. Uh, these are things that weigh you know, upwards of maybe two tons. And so being able to, to sort of lift up one and a half, two tons, um, and then somehow get that into something that you can transport across all that terrain is actually pretty, pretty difficult. For our project, um, it sort of looked like it was the 19th century out there. Uh, it was, um, you know, we built these large wooden scaffolds, and uh, we had tractors with sort of large flat beds, and we would load it into tractors and things. We'd have to build and rebuild this, the, these structures uh, several times. Uh, over the course of the uh, over the course of the trip, in order to sort of negotiate it over terrains, just to get it through the museum doors, one of the stele took um, approximately 12 hours. The two stele we took out, um, we we decided on those two specifically for um, for the reasons of sort of, uh, I guess, preservation and also importance. 
One of the stele that we took out uh, was a, uh, a stele that had a lot of information on it, had a lot of hieroglyphs on it. Um, and from a historical standpoint, it was very important. It talks about the, the birth of a king and uh, his accession. The other stele that we took out um, is of sort of, in terms of history of science, is actually uh, the more important of the two, uh, in the sense that it has the hieroglyphs on it that actually identify the site as he sweets. The reason for why that's important stems from the fact that uh, in the late, I don't know, 1980s or so, uh, folks like myself were able to figure out that there were several uh, Maya sites out there named in the inscriptions that we had no idea where they were. They were sort of the quintessential lost cities. Hishwitz was a name that was mentioned in the inscriptions, but it was actually one of those lost cities. Uh, and so the stele that we took out of, uh, of Spodio Ball and brought to the museum actually was the one that enabled scholars to figure out that Spodio Ball was in fact the location of one of those cities. It's, it seems romantic, but you know, when you're in the field, oftentimes it's, it's, you, know, you feel almost miserable. It's sort of like, you know, it's, it's relatively harsh conditions and such. Um, but when you get back, basically one, you have bragging rights, and two, the next thing you want to do is go back. I can honestly say that Middlebury has offered me so much, especially the museum, to give me this opportunity. I couldn't be any more thankful because that's really um, driven my career path. You know, there is no substitute for being the first person to see something as it comes out of the ground that's been buried for 2,000 years. You know, that, that, that sort of wonder aspect of it is one of the reasons why I became an archaeologist, and it's one of the things that I think sort of keeps me going. Being able to share that sense of wonder and discovery with a student, is, that just makes it, it, just makes it so much better.